but I thought I would at least talk about the somewhat breaking news that's been occurring now in the BAPAverse, um, considering oh, concerning Brendan Schaub's UK Euro Island Scotland tour that's now been cancelled, it looks like, completely. I'm not going to say fully cancelled yet because there's some other dates that are still up on the website and whatnot that I'm seeing on my end on Ticketmaster, but I'm sure people can confirm it. But it looks like the rumours are true. The rumours are true and the show, those that entire Euro tour that he was meant to be going on um, in Republic of Ireland, Northern Ireland, um, Scotland and in London have now been cancelled. It seems like it. If you believe what Brendan is saying in specifically this recent episode of The Short Show where he basically looks very downtrodden, doesn't look like his normal bubbly self and he essentially confirms it without confirming it saying that he's going to be hanging around more often than not in LA um, throughout the next few weeks and also heading into the summer so this is the clip that I'm going to quickly play for you here courtesy of the short show episode number 338 where he kind of confirms the news that the tour has been now cancelled pretty insane if you tell me i was i'm actually surprised it's happening i'm not gonna lie i'll give you my opinion on the other side but let's play the clip all righty um that's that, pretty that much it so tight yeah it sure is spray painted on that's cool uh there you have it yeah ufc 289 this weekend again not gonna knock your dick in the ground but it is a fun card i'll tell you i can guarantee you the combat fight can companions can be way better we got Polly shore we got some we got the schmo coming and another giant guest it's gonna be a grand old time the tiger thick whiskey is gonna be flowing the fucking it's gonna be fun get into i'm looking forward to it uh charles Oliveira, darius let's not pretend that's not the main event can we all knock the shit off all right all right chain can you knock the shit off <laughs> man that is the main right? event. you got a mexican probably gonna be your uh women's bantamweight champ so that's cool yeah dan eagie on the card against nate Landwehr, which is always fun. But again, is it worth eighty dollars? That's up to you. The Calabas fight campaign is free. Yeah, it's it's gonna be better than here this. It comes, so here it tune comes, in here it comes. 10 p.m. Pacific on Thick Boy YouTube only. Like and subscribe to the channel right now if you haven't done that. Love you guys. Thanks for watching. I'll be doing spots all around LA in the summer. Gonna be spend time with my family. So I love you guys. Next tour date on the books right now. There will be more, but right now it's Spokane, Washington. Spokane is September twenty first to the twenty third. I'm at Skank Fest in Las Vegas. That's right. Skank Fest, Las Vegas, September 29th to October 1st. Get you some. All right. So pretty interesting update when you consider everything that's been going on. First off, this shouldn't be that big of a deal. People find it hard to sell tickets everywhere, right? Whether it's the biggest acts that you know, the smallest acts, the one coming up, it's difficult. I spent a large part of my youth and my kind of early 20s, essentially being a club promoter. That's the only way that I could get DJ gigs. When you first start out, it's really difficult to get DJ gigs. It's probably, you know, it just is all the time, really, to be honest, unless you're kind of signed to an agency. And the only way you can really kind of get DJ gigs for yourself is to kind of put on fine parties, essentially, and book yourself and book people that you'd want to see play. So you put on these events as a way to get you to play. Um, in front of a crowd and also to maybe book people that you maybe love um, see coming up as well or people you just want to you know have play in your city because they don't usually play there what you'll realize soon is that even if you're booking somebody who's got a big name you're booking them on the really good date it's like a public holiday it's a weekend at the end of the month whatever it is you time it perfectly sometimes it doesn't matter just the fact that you've booked an event there's just other events going on people have to choose which one to go to because they can't go to everything and sometimes it just doesn't go the way that you plan it to go even with the best of intentions even with like a list um you know um people on your lineup as well like outside of you kind of coming up like actually legitimate people who actually sell tickets it can be difficult to sell tickets at the best of times the thing about brendan i think that makes it funny and why everyone's kind of laughing and giggling at it is that for the longest time and i don't know why this was a thing he kind of had this idea or kind of walked around, spoke spoke about himself as if he was this like big touring sellout comic. And I think when he first started, I think that was one of the first things I remember kind of rubbed me up the wrong way when I started to kind of, you know, delve into the land of the homeless cats where I was kind of being a little bit like, you know what, this guy doesn't seem like the coolest, nicest guy in the world. When he started to get a little bit of steam in his own career and he was starting to blow up a little bit himself, what? in terms of his stand-up career, he was selling tickets quite 
you know, quite quickly and quite often because of the novelty of him being a former UFC fighter, the fame from the podcast and maybe the appearances on Joe, whatever the reason was, he was selling pretty well early on, despite him not really being that long in the game and probably in spite of him not being that funny, but he was doing well. Now that I don't think was any indication of his ability to sell tickets. It was just at that moment, that was what he could do because he was a big name. People liked who he was about, you know, liked him as a person at that time. Didn't really, he didn't really have as many probably haters as he has nowadays. And it made a lot of sense. But he, for some reason, used that little moment as a justification of, oh, look, I've completed this stand up comedy game. I don't know how you guys haven't clocked it. I don't know how you guys don't get it. I don't know why you guys aren't saying the most. And he'd kind of be stunting a lot and kind of flexing on people, especially Brian Callen. Brian Callen like cucks out for Brendan a lot, but those episodes where Brendan was selling out his tours, selling out his shows, his weekend things and stuff, and basically saying, I don't need to promote my things. I've already sold them out and actually really cocky, those were quite uncomfortable to watch. Even if you're a fan of the show, just, you know, for, for Brian Cannon alone, because he's like a 20 plus year comic. He's been past the store, all this good stuff. And he was struggling to sell tickets at like regular, you know, comedy clubs around the city or just around the country overall. So you kind of felt bad for Brendan. Sorry, for Brian at the time. So that kind of went on for a long period of time. He'd kind of used that ability to sell tickets as justification of like, hey, you, all you haters out there that say I'm terrible at stand up, I'm, I'm not funny. That can't be true because look, I'm selling tickets. And then, you know, then the leaks came out, cursor of BGL. And I think one of the leaks that BGL put out there, I forgot who the comic was, but one of the guys that kind of helped out Brendan when everyone got cancelled and you won't need to step in. I think it might be Josh Wolf. I remember BGL saying something along the lines of like, Brendan behind the scenes would be like insulting Josh Wolf and saying, oh, he doesn't sell tickets, da 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 da, and kind of talking down on him because in Brian Brendan's head, he's a bigger comic than Josh Wolf. Josh Wolf, I'm saying, but his name is that's Josh Wolf, but you know how it is, because um, he sells more tickets to them, which I just thought was really unnecessary and just didn't make any sense. So a lot of people stick, a lot of people kind of going at Brendan for the ticket sales, especially the guys who are in the Fire and the Kids stuff, is mostly because Brendan used it as something to kind of wear as a point of pride and to kind of flex and say, hey, I can't be crap, I stand up because I sell tickets. And now, in general, he would just use the stuff selling tickets thing as just like, you know, something to kind of flex on because he couldn't really sit there and say, hey, I'm actually, you know, objectively funny because clearly the guy isn't. So most people, most stand-up comedians don't get this level of scrutiny on the amount of tickets they sell or don't sell because I think most fans realise that it's difficult to sell tickets. But Brendan gets it because of how he's been acting and the things that he's been saying, you know, in these, in these previous years when he was maybe a little more popular than he is now. But this one is way more concerning, I think, because I feel like this particular tour was something that he did himself. That's my personal opinion, because I don't understand how any sensible agent, booking person, manager would ever, ever, ever tell Brendan Shaw that it was a good idea to attempt to do an international tour, quote unquote, in these markets, Dublin, London, Glasgow and Belfast, at some of the biggest venues in each of these countries, respective countries. It makes no sense. Brendan can't even sell out the comedy store La Jolla on a, for a weekend. Just this one gone past. Right? It just this one gone past. I think he might have done two shows Saturday and a show on Sunday. He couldn't even sell out the comedy store La Jolla. Why is he booking 2,500 cap venue like the London O2 Shepherds Bush Empire which I've been to before a few times for gigs and stuff why would you book that it's 2,500 capacity maybe you could get it down to 2,000 if you work in a bit of a deal but it's a 2,500 capacity um, theatre that you're booking in another country what makes you think you can fill that up or sell it out even close to getting it sold out if you can't even sell out the comedy store La Jolla that makes no sense. So my theory on this is that he most likely booked this whole tour thing himself. This was probably the same around the same time he was doing the whole I'm betting on myself thing. Around the same time he was probably launching the whiskey. After the same time of getting dropped off a of Showtime. Like the guy's brain works in weird ways. So most likely he got dropped from Showtime or fired, whatever. They didn't want to renew his contract. Either way, I don't think he wanted to leave. He was basically put in a position where he had to leave. There's a way to kind of make himself look good on the internet. He goes and buys a green Ferrari. Okay, cool, whatever. 
do your thing. And then I think to show that he's still kind of doing well, he then goes that he then decides, oh, I'm put I'm putting out my own special. Does it in the most haphazardy way. Production's all over the place. The material itself is fucking awful. Production is fucking terrible. It comes out, it gets completely panned. And then the way to kind of bounce back and show that he's the guy, he books his own Euro tour because he thinks like, oh, so he books his own international theatre tour because he thinks he's at that level. Because if you think back at it, there was another leak from BGL. So, you know, BGL has been a bit of a pain, but, you know, he provides some good information. Remember BGL said before that one of the interesting things about Gringo Pappy, post Gringo Pappy, was that a lot of people on the top for the Friday Kiss subreddit were asking BGL, I think maybe during the AMA, hey, BGL, what was the atmosphere or the vibe like after Gringo Pappy dropped? Because all of us thought, most people look watching from the outside in, thought, oh my God, Gringo Pappy was awful, right? He should have never released it. 30 minute special that was like 27 minutes or less of jokes. It was absolutely horrendous. It actually was doing far, it actually did far more damage to his perception, reputation, um, how he's viewed, whatever it may be, um, more so than you'd be surprised. And we were thinking, oh, surely it must be like, you know, it must have been like a real dour moment at Thick Boy Studios after that dropped. And BJ said something, no, nah. he was like, no, nah, it wasn't actually. Brendan actually thought it went well. He was actually surprised he wasn't able to do theatre shows straight after that. He actually assumed that Gringo Pappy was going to be the special that was going to launch him into doing, you know, countrywide theatre tours, in a theatre tours, sorry, in America. Can you imagine that? If you watch Gringo Pappy, can you imagine expecting or anticipating that crock of shit to be the thing that would launch your career. It's a it's a delusion on another level that I would legit love to see a documentary on. I hope some of the better um, YouTubers out there that do documentaries and stuff like the Porcelains and all these other guys, Beige Frequencies, I hope they step up one time and decide or just are curious enough to kind of delve into it and kind of figure out like what goes into the mind of somebody like to book you know, himself an international tour to look like you're a big international comic when you can't even sell out the comedy store La Jolla. Like what this what possesses somebody to think that the Gringo Papi was gonna be the special was gonna launch your career into the fucking stratosphere. What does that to somebody? It makes completely no sense. And the other thing that's weird about this, the really strange thing about this also, for me, if you look at this video here, screenshot taken from the Fire and the Kid um, website, it's got all their tour dates listed, right? So Brendan Schaub's date, um, so he's on there in the URL, that's his site, section of the site, and he's got his up and coming tour dates. So far, when he was talking at the end of the Schaub show, he mentioned his next date being Spokane for the summer. He didn't mention anything about the Pasadena thing. So I'm wondering what that is about, if that's just because it's a Schaub and Friends show, in a random comedy club maybe he doesn't really care too much about it but he mentioned Spokane more than he mentioned the Shulban Friends thing which is weird but then look at the list I remember the Skankfest Las Vegas and as somebody pointed out here before I reckon if he was able to cancel this UK Euro tour even if it's a super like you know short notice it makes me think that there's a possibility that Skankfest could also be cancelled because it looks like this summer might be the quietest summer that Brendan's had in a while in terms of getting booked. And again, it doesn't matter for most people. We're only nitpicking this shit because he wears it like a badge of honor and it's like a thing to say, oh, look, I'm definitely a better comic than you guys think I am because I still have to tickets. When he didn't really, it didn't really ever cross his mind that maybe he was selling tickets in the beginning because he was a novelty, because of that like celebrity factor about him being well known on Rogan the UFC stuff the the TFAK blowing up at the time like that was part of the reason maybe why he was selling tickets earlier on because so you know judging by his material it's not as if his material was better when he first started it was because he was new so that made a lot of sense and they probably had way more fans back then so that so maybe now we're seeing the clear correlation right we might be seeing a clear correlation or the clear no, the clear the clear result of the fans dropping off little by little over the years because so far, a few of us, especially on the Final Kiss subreddit, have been kind of wondering, like, how is this thing still staying about, staying afloat? Like, the, the product is terrible across the board. Brian Cannon and Brendan Schwab clearly don't want to be around each other outside of the podcast. When they've been doing the podcast, it's fucking, like, it's pulling teeth. They try their best to have to have fun and make it worthwhile. But it's clear something they just do to clock in and clock out on. How is it still, you know, staying above water? But I guess now, sorry... We're not seeing a clear, um, you know, representation, illustration of the career drop up a little bit because I don't think I've ever seen 
um, and uh, you know, this kind of caliber of dates from Brendan be cancelled so late. That's why I was surprised at it because I'd imagine that he was going to wear this as like a badge of honor that he's going on tour. It's going to be a big deal. He was going to come in and do True Geordie. He was going to come here and do, I don't know, whatever thing. He might have done Sidemen. I don't know. He might have done some other big UK podcast out here, some other big Irish podcast. And talk, you know, you would have did some material some content with some people maybe one on that sneaker show we have here in the uk you probably would have went to a popping restaurant whatever it would have all been part of the whole content strategy whatever so to dump this whole thing now basically proves that most likely this was cancelled most likely because of low ticket sales because one of the things about these venues is that i'd imagine the margins are going to be pretty decent if you sell it out right you sell it out you get some good margins i think someone mentioned here like i think you have to hire it all out you basically get the tickets for the most part so if you you know if you're able to sell out you know i think i looked at the maps the other day if you're able to sell like two thousand tickets which is a lot of tickets to move a lot of tickets don't get me wrong but if you can sell two thousand tickets for thirty dollars a pop that's already like six grand you're looking at or no 60 grand so you're looking at right so it's a, it's a decent amount of money of course you have to take out the cost and the hiring and the security blah 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 but if you can sell out these venues it makes sense why these american artists are, come, are coming on you know are going overseas to place like the uk especially if you've got a large fan base because you don't come here often anyway so if you can come here once a year twice a year sometimes if, if, if at a stretch you can hit these four venues and get like 60 60 60 60 and go back home like you know basically grossing a million maybe you're not going to have it all no not gross a million sorry my maths is my i've got brendan short maths there but grossing a quarter of a million right nearly but you can you know you can make some decent amount of money especially if you add on top of that the vip packages the sign you know the what's it meet and greets all that fucking nonsense so i see the the allure of it the allure of it i see it but I personally think it was incredibly idiotic for this guy to book venues of 2,500 capacity. It just doesn't make any sense. Like, I don't know who advises this person or if he has any other people advising him, they probably do need to kind of take a real long, hard look at themselves in the mirror because it's insane that somebody that can't sell out, like I keep saying to you, the comedy store La Jolla would expect to come overseas and set out venues of 2,500. It makes no freaking sense. Unless there is a comedian out there. I don't know. Again, maybe I'm uneducated. Maybe there is a comedian out there who doesn't get, you know, doesn't sell out comedy clubs in the US. But then when they go international, somehow they sell like 1,000 tickets, 2,000 tickets. I don't think that's possible personally for me. But maybe it, maybe it is. I just feel like... The guy tried to book his own tour, tried to look like a big wig, and now it's all kind of come tumbling down. But the annoying thing I think about this, personally for me, is if you're a fan of the guy, and again, I'm saying this personally because I bought the ticket, so I'm a, I've got a little bit, I've been a little bit burned, even though I'm going to get a refund, it'll be fine. But the annoying thing, if you're a fan, you don't really get any real explanation. He just kind of cancels the shows last minute. So if you, you know, most likely you're a working class person, middle class person, you most likely are over the age of 25. You may or may not have a partner and some kids. You may not may not have some pets. So you have to make arrangements way ahead of time. Like, you know, I'm, I'm sure some of you are the same if you're over the age of fucking 25 and you're maybe living on your own. When you've got days off and stuff, you're planning them like weeks in advance, days off. Vacations, you're planning them months in advance. So you're already setting out stuff of like, okay, who's going to look after my dog and cat? Who's going to look after my kids? Um, who's gonna come and who's gonna come and fucking you know water my plants while I'm away? You got to do these fucking adulty life things to get in place before you can go out on a night out with your partner or with your friend or by yourself, have some drinks, you know, do some drugs and listen to a fucking comedy. You have to put a lot into place. So when these things just get cancelled like that, <laughs> to me, it's a real big spit in the face of the fans especially with no real legit explanation and comedians tend to do this more often than not than more often than most people i've seen i know in the from the dj scene that i'm kind of obsessed with and a part of there that does happen sometimes but there is a lot of kind of excuse making about you know unforeseen circumstances i'm ill blah 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 so they do try to make some effort to like explain so fans will go super crazy and usually they'll close comments like they do something right? i mean they're aware of like how taboo it is and how kind of bad it makes them look but for like stand-up comedians don't give a fuck they just wake up one day like just can't be bothered no i'm not i'm not doing it 
like a couple of weeks before a few weeks before it's like brother like how can you just cancel the show a whole entire tour that you're meant to be going on in literally a couple of weeks just a couple of weeks beforehand especially international tour everyone's got to put things in place and now suddenly that weekend is gone you have to do completely something else it's really 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 crazy but to be fair to be fair if you are it's a very done said it so very design said it already there i was just about to say if you, to be fair to him if you were paying attention you would have known this show this uk tour euro tour thing was never going to happen anyway because he stopped promoting this a long long time ago like men i think maybe even a couple of months ago he stopped promoting i think somebody already mentioned it on the subreddit he didn't really talk about it that much on his instagram but he didn't really mention it after the show because he does plug in his dates he didn't really, he never really spoke about it he kind of you know it kind of was there and if it sold it sold but he never really mentioned it too tough so i think he had decided a long time ago that he was never ever ever going to go because most likely because the ticket sales because these venues as much as the as much as, as much as the margins are great i'd imagine also they don't play games if you don't sell a certain amount they just cancel your show that's you know i think most of us kind of you know can figure that out you know these o2 academies and what live nation controlled venues and shit they don't play no games if you don't send us above a certain amount the show gets cancelled they don't even leave it on because i guess the operating costs are just too much for them to make it worth their while to have a show with 400 people in me if it's me personally i've got an option and i've said this so many times i think maybe because again i come from the world of you know club promoting and putting on parties for djs and stuff and events for myself as a dj and i've kind of been through brutal events where i've put on an event spent a ton of money on it and then people you know one person turned up you know 10 people turned up it's like a venue of like 400 you're like so i've i've seen it all but i if it's me i'm such a pro in my side of things this is the only thing i'm a pro at right i'm putting on a show i'm never canceling a show because no people no one's turning up i'm still playing like i've you know i've djs in i've djs in fucking horrible pubs where people are you know mu much more where people don't even want me to be there and they're more preoccupied about watching something on tv and actually get annoyed about me playing there but i'm playing like i'm fucking playing in the biggest club in the world you know what i mean i'm oh, i'm putting on the show i'm gonna perform for that for the one two three four five ten people that are there and they kind of work my way up that way but some people just can't do that and i think for some reason there's something about comedians where they just can't handle especially the ones that maybe have sold some tickets they can't ever handle the idea of performing for crowds that aren't as maybe grandiose as their idea of what they kind of look like is and i've never really understood that personally i don't understand that um what's what's the severity designer here saying i think he just died uh, severity designer said i think he just started trying to hype the tour because chris is selling out theaters and eric is getting booked at the mothership force yeah probably but i just think if that was me i don't know maybe i'm like maybe i have a lot more self-awareness maybe that's the thing or maybe i just have an ability to do a lot of self-inventory and maybe i'm a little bit you know as as for all of my shortcomings i think i still have the ability to kind of realize when i'm fucking up and doing things the wrong way and try to correct course sometimes it might be too late for some people it might just not be something that can be forgivable whatever the reason is but i think i have the ability to do that i think other people maybe have as well so it's difficult to kind of get into the mind of somebody that can't do it because you're like hold on it doesn't make any sense because if i'm brendan and i'm looking at it objectively there was a point in his career where he was selling tickets despite not being good at stand-up early on his career because let's say if you're brendan and you believe you're a better comic now than you were seven years ago cool you were selling tickets seven years ago now suddenly you're not selling as many and it's seven years later but you think you're better why don't you think it through as to why that could be the case that's what i'll be doing i'll be listing down the reasons why why if that's the case okay you can blame the da you can blame dana white <laughs> You can blame fucking who's the guy gavin newsom all these things right put those things aside but why is it what personally has that guy done differently that would allow him or put him in a position where he's not selling as many tickets seven years down the line and then from then on that's where i would make the adjustments in my career to make sure that i can get back to that level again that's what i'd be doing because he did sell tickets at one point at one point he was selling 
pretty well. And like I said, I remember specific shows where he wouldn't even plug his shows. He'd be like, no, nah, I'm not plugging anything. I got no plugs, you know. Check, check T5K for more dates. Everything sold out. He'd be so happy about it. But for some reason, he doesn't, he isn't able to kind of do that self-inventory. It doesn't even occur in his brain. It's just like, nah, you know, it's just DA. It's Gavin Newsom. It's the woke media. It's fucking cancel culture. It's fucking deep, you know, platform. I'm being deep platform. Like, what? What? What do you even, what does that guy even say day to day that's, worthy enough of you know attracting the glare of some of these big corporate sponsors he, like he doesn't say anything interesting doesn't really have any interesting opinions or anything like i don't really understand that side of things that's something i really would kind of i wouldn't really be able to work out through my head that that was him because you know he just doesn't think about these things in that way but yeah that's the big news the show has been cancelled there's there is no euro or uk talk happening it's not happening at all it looks like End this last bit. Let's see what it says at the end. Then I have Chet, Niagara Falls, New York. Niagara Falls, New York's November 4th and 5th. I think one show on the 4th, one show on the 5th. Some big ass casino in Niagara Falls, New York. Never been there. I'll check out the fall. <laughs> he sounds enthusiastic about that. And another thing also, you know, also is interesting about this. Um, again, another another thing about BGO. That BGO guy has been a fucking horror. horror. That whole BGO escapade, that whole sp- era arc of the story was horrible to kind of cover man i'm hopefully to never go over it again but to be fair to bj he did give us some really juicy bits of info that we had no real idea on and one bit of juicy info that he gave us was that podcast sponsors like they sort of work in delay the contracts they're kind of based on like numbers that they sign up on the day so if they sign if, if they also sign me now for a podcast sponsorship it'd be based on the metrics i'm getting now but then that would hold over for three years. So if I then had a dip, it wouldn't matter because I still get paid based on like 2023 stats instead of 2022, 2020, you know, 2026 stats if they got worse. So you can kind of make a lot of money, but then it doesn't really hurt your, you know, you can kind of make, your money is never affected based on the views going, now you kind of know what I mean, right? That makes any kind of sense. Yeah, big up Austin Casey. Every move Brenda makes is based on delusion and ego. Bingo, Fact. bingo, 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 bingo. Big up Austin Casey. I appreciate it for the $10, brother. Thank you so much for the donation. Um, so yeah, so BGO said that's how the contracts work, which is why TFAK has been able to survive despite the numbers being horrible, right? The stats kind of like dropping off considerably because early episodes of T5K, even without like Chris D'Elia and like, you know, Chris, Pete Chris D'Elia and Will Sasso and Theo back in the day, they would easily get 100,000 to sometimes half a million views, like just Brendan and Brian. So clearly the drop has been crazy, right? And he said that's the case because they signed these deals, you know, based on the metrics you already have. And sometimes with Brendan, of course, he would buy views, right? Clearly, we can see that's the case because the pod is awful. No one's, you know, no one with a brain is going to be watching that stuff like and, en- and enjoying it. It just doesn't make any sense. And especially if you look at the, the views and the likes and stuff, it's just easy to tell if you're, if you watch enough content, you make content yourself, it's easy to tell who buys views and shit. Cool. And, um, one thing I was noticing about these dates is also I was wondering if that's also the case for like tours and stuff and selling tickets and booking shows. Like maybe now even in the States, which you imagine is his prime market. It should be his prime market. It is his prime market. We're now seeing these gaps in these dates are a reflection of maybe the fall off in terms of him being able to sell tickets. Like, cause I'll do, that's the thing that always used to surprise me. Like how, oft, how is he able to consider consistently, get these kind of weekend gig tour things when it's clear he doesn't sell many tickets at all and the show's a doo-doo right the comedy's not great put the comedy to one side because i think if you're a comedy club owner you don't really give a fuck if the guy or gal or person on stage is funny you just want them to bring a crowd so they can you know buy beers and shit and eat food and stay in your club all night cool but the guy clearly doesn't sell tickets at all he finds it hard to sell like standard on a number in the comedy club so i always wonder like how does he keep consistently getting new dates at these new spots because i know from me when i used to promote and put on parties and raves and places you would get really embarrassed if you put on a night and no one came and then you saw the event oh you saw the 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 venue owner or the booker there because you know you know as soon as you saw them and they noticed a crowd that most likely you would never get another date 
So if you as a DJ or you as an event booker, like you would dread seeing the fucking owner or the manager there. You'd be like, oh no, man, they're going to see this and they're going to know like I didn't do anything. No one came through. I'm not a draw, like whatever, right? You'd be hating it, dreading it. So I was wondering, how is this guy able to kind of keep like double dipping, trip? Like he's getting rebooked to these places when he's not selling tickets. Doesn't make any sense. And I thought maybe the comedy, the comedy, Stand up comedy seems a bit different, maybe from from DJing, and maybe it's because based on these fucking celebrity, I don't know. But maybe this is now an edu- indication that because of the economy, that maybe things have changed. Maybe now comedy clubs are actually not allowing or not giving people more dates if they can't sell d- tickets beforehand. This is maybe a reflection of it. Who knows? I'm not too sure because this is an interesting gap in in dates. Like he's got dates in July, September, November, but then you know it's June, July, or August, October, like nothing. It's a big gaps in terms of his kind of schedule and shit, which is quite interesting considering that he was always kind of bragging about the dates, as, you know, and what he was doing going forward. But yeah, UK Euro Tour is fucking over. That dream is completely done. And um, yeah, the using the kiddos as a meat as a human meat shield. Yo, that's tough. <laughs> using the kiddos as a human meat shield, the same guy that doesn't actually like hanging out with his kids. <laughs> it's fucking wild there's clips of this guy clips there's clips of this guy talking where he says jokingly not jokingly that he would purposely book shows to kind of be away from his family and now all of a sudden he's like oh i want to spend the summer with the kiddos sorry sorry sir no we don't believe you we don't believe you we don't believe you i'm sorry we do not believe you <laughs> but again that is kind of shameless to be fair to like use the kids as an excuse it's kind of like when you you know you're late for work or something and you just say someone died in your family you don't even want to take ownership of it you don't even want to kind of man up to it you don't you know whatever you just say my someone died it's like that is really bad vibes <laughs> really really bad vibes and it seems like Brendan always goes for that hail mary pass like it's my kids it's my kids it's like bro you don't really speak about your kids in glowing ways um you clearly don't want to be at home because you try and book as many tours as possible to be away from home when you are when you are at home we see the pictures on the fucking subreddit he looks like he doesn't want to be with his family you know what i mean he looks you know very downtrodden and shit which might understand again might be understandable because of his age and stuff when you have young kids you probably want your alone time blah 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 i know that i'm not really the most educated on that sort of shit but still using your kids as an excuse when you're not really the kids guy is funny especially when you think about that fucking what was that time that time when his wife had a fucking miscarriage and he went on tour he, he didn't come back like you know i don't know you find that out on road you, you you're you know you're you're cut you're tore up about it like your wife is and you you know you decide to go back home you cancel the half leg of the show no he was posting pictures of himself in, in the bathtub and shit <laughs> with the boys and his wife's having a miscarriage like on her own like just dealing with that shit on her own uploading the stuff on social media because i don't know why she's doing that who knows she's not a celebrity in her own right but hey who cares i just found all that stuff fucking hilarious man really really fucking hilarious